Hi guys, Michael Jensen here. Welcome to my aquarium room. If you've been on this channel before, you've probably seen the rack behind me, the green wall. Um, but we got other racks as well. Got a rack over there, which is mostly a, um, a rack for killies and other small fish, uh, and primarily for breeding. Today we're going to take a look at one of these tanks over here, the bottom left corner, where we've got a new fish, a killifish, the beautiful Australibius nigra penis. Hang on. Australibius nigropenis, also known as Argentine pearl killifish or blackfin pearlfish. The Danish name for these fish, Stjernehimmelfisk, actually refer to the, the dark background and the glowing spots. And Free translated, it is the starry sky fish. This beautiful fish was one of the pioneers of the aquarium hobby. It was discovered in the early 1900s in temporary ponds on the Argentine Pampas, northwest of Buenos Aires. It was scientifically described by Regan in 1912. At first it was named Sinolibius nigropenis, but the name was changed to Australibius nigropenis. Visually, this fish is drop-dead gorgeous, at least the males are. The females wear a drab, spotted brown color and is a bit smaller than the colorful males. Living in temporary ponds, these fish are annual breeders. They live hard and die young. They seldom live more than nine months. Australibius nigropenis prefer slightly acidic, soft water at 15 to 20 degrees Celsius that is 60 to 68 degree Fahrenheit and should not be kept at temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius. Higher temperatures will drastically reduce the lifespan. These fish grow fast and they prefer live foods such as Daphnia, Cobapods, Mosquito larva, and Glassworms.
When these fish were first introduced to the tank, they had a little dispute. I guess they were just trying to find out who was in charge. It looked dramatic, but uh, no one got hurt. And after a few minutes, it all calmed down. Since then, they lived peacefully together. It's not like one of them is dominating the other. They seem to go along well now. I will keep an eye on them though. If aggression builds up, I will split them up into tanks. I got these two males and four females. So they could be made into two trios instead. For spawning, they require a thick layer of peat, cocoa fiber, or other soft material they can dive into to deposit their eggs. When you feel there are enough eggs in the peat, typically in about a month, remove it from the tank. Squeeze most of the water out of the peat and leave it to dry up a bit on a newspaper or a paper cloth. Then put the semi-dry peat in a plastic bag and wait two to four months before placing the eggs back in fresh, soft water. The eggs should also be incubated at low temperature. In the natural habitat, temperatures can go as low as 5 degrees Celsius. If hatching doesn't occur, put the eggs back in the bag and try again later. Even if you get some fry, there might be more eggs that will hatch next time you soak the peat. Often you see these fish kept in small unlit containers with nothing but the spawning substrate and dark muddy water, but they really deserve better. Like most other fish, they really thrive and glow when kept in clean tanks with lots of plants. Live food and regular water chains also supercharge the colors. Okay guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.